name is Ian Gillespie. Uh, I'm doing my presentation on something I'm really passionate about, which is uh, robotics. So, all right. So you might be asking at first, why robotics of all things? Uh, I came to Bow in eighth grade, and one of the first things I tried out was actually robotics at the middle school, and I absolutely loved it. It was something I really got into. It was a huge challenge for me, and it was something that really built upon where I am today. Um, I think the challenges I was faced with in robotics kind of built up to the classes I've taken today, the major I want to go into, and even extracurricular activities I've taken in high school, which is other robotics. So when I decided on senior project, I decided I wanted to do something I love, and um, you know I consider robotics. I want to kind of give back to the program which really shaped who I am today. So um, FLL is the middle school robotics level. It stands for First Lego League. Uh, it's a subdivision of the first organization, which was created by Dean Kamen. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Dean Kamen created the Segway, and he's a multimillionaire now because of it, and donates a lot of his money and time to robotics. Uh, the first organization tries to get students interested in robotics by giving them competitions and seasons, and he's been doing it about for 25 years now. Um, so eventually, one year, Dean Kamen decided he wanted to start you know, showing this to middle schoolers as well. He created the first Lego League which combines the concepts he kind of invented for his robotics organization with a Lego kit called NXT, which combines Lego bricks with sensors, motors, and wires, uh, which lets kids program and build their own robots. So it's a pretty cool program that lets kids challenge themselves in a unique way. So um, how FLL has changed me. Um, as I said before, FLL has really shaped who I am. Uh, right, out, right when I got into high school, I already loved robotics. I went and pursued VHS in the robotics team, and then I took the PLTW engineering course because of it. And in turn, uh, because of this program, I'm going to be hopefully majoring in mechanical engineering, which is my plan. So really, this has been kind of like the beginning of a whole path for me, and it's really encouraged me to go the route I've been on. So when I decided what I wanted to do, I talked to Mr. Edwards at the middle school, and he told me he'd really love some help with coaching one of the teams, which was the Bo Wildcats. Um, so I came in uh, to the room on the first day, and there were kids running around, talking over each other, and you know just yelling. It was, it was typical middle, middle school stuff. Um, but I wasn't surprised, because I'd gone through the same thing myself uh, back in eighth grade. And I wasn't discouraged either, because I knew that this team would eventually learn how to work together and be effective uh, building a robot, because I had lived it myself and seen that chaos turned into something better and you know them organize themselves. Uh, so one of the first things I did was actually build a team's practice board. The practice board is kind of like uh, a sports field for the robot. Uh, it's a big wooden rectangle with a mat inside and there's a bunch of obstacles made of Legos as well uh, that the robot can push, pull, and take with them. So it, this kind of board challenges the kids to think of creative ways to solve puzzles almost. So, one of the most uh, intriguing and interesting things about robotics compared to other extracurricular activities is how lenient it is of who they <coughs> let in. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put in sports as a kind of comparison. If you want to be on the basketball team or the football team, it's pretty apparent that you have to play basketball or football. It's kind of a prerequisite. But uh, with robotics, that's not necessarily the case. There are plenty of kids on middle school and high school teams that aren't even interested in building a robot or don't even care about that. Uh, because there's more to that. I'll, I'll give the example of the high school team I'm on right now. Um, up at the high school level, robots cost a couple thousand dollars to make. So some kids that want to go into economics and maybe want to do a business major decide they want to invest their time in finding out how to fundraise money and um, talk to companies about how to make this robot. Um, some other kids, see in this t-shirt here, like to do some graphic stuff. One of the kids on the middle school team decided he wanted to donate all of his time towards making the team's t-shirt. Uh, every day, instead of coming to build a robot, he would go in, uh, go to like MS Paint or Photoshop, and learn his stuff. And eventually, he was able to um, create what the, what the team wanted and order it from a t-shirt provider. So it really does cater to a lot of kids and what they want. Um, and I think it really does allow a lot of lenient stuff. Uh, another example is, I have a friend right now who's a freshman in college, and last year on our high school team, he did the t-shirts as well, and right now he's a graphics art major. So it really does kind of um, push your future almost, or that view. So um, a few months into the competition, the kids have been building and innovating their robot, and eventually they had their regional competition. Uh, by this time, they learned how to work together and build an effective robot. 
and they came to Concord. There were about 20 teams there, and it was probably an eight hour long event. There's actually two sides to uh, FLL. There's the robot itself, and there's the presentation. Each year, the first program decides on a uh, topic for kids to research. When I did in eighth grade, it was food waste, so kids had to research how to limit food waste, but uh, this year it's recycling. So the Bow Wildcats decided they wanted to research um, how to limit the amount of packing peanuts and bubble wrap going into like Amazon boxes. So they concentrated a whole uh, presentation on that. So they came in, did their presentation. It was pretty informative, but the, the presentation of it wasn't the most effective. I talked to them after, and they all admitted that they think that they could have used more time practicing it themselves. You see, a lot of the kids were separated in different rooms, doing different things, and they didn't have a lot of time to meet together and just kind of run through their presentation. And I think it was really maturing for enough of these middle schoolers to admit that they had made a mistake and that they should have uh, invested more time in this presentation. So it was really cool to see that. The other side was the competition itself. Um, the matches are only two minutes, um, and they are usually have three or four hours between them. What happens is the, the team would go up and they put their robot out, and these robots are autonomous, which means that the team doesn't remote control the robot or anything. They just put the robot down, and it runs a program that they already did like a month before. So there's no messing with the robot that makes a mistake. You just got to let it go and trust that it will make the turns you wanted. Um, so between matches, the kids actually decided, instead of looking at other robots or uh, going out eating food or something, they would improve upon their robot. Each match during the three or four hours they had between uh, the competition matches, they would uh, improve on the program they had and build up on their robot. And that, was, that was really cool to see. And it showed because each match their points actually went up significantly. And they were getting really excited by that. And there was a lot of that. So. In the end, um, they came in the top 10 for placing, and they were really, really happy. Um, I think, I think, and they all agreed that if they hadn't done that improving between matches, they wouldn't even have come close to placing. But they did, and they were really happy. The only problem was they only had under a week until the state competition, uh, and that was November break, so they only had a couple meetings until then. Yeah. So. I expected during the couple of meetings between regions and states them to concentrate more on the robot, but they surprised me by actually um, rehearsing their presentation multiple times. They got, they really, really, really got their presentation down. They learned from their mistakes, and I kind of sat in as a mock audience for them. And they, I give them criticism and they research more. So by the time states came around, their presentation was a lot better. They came in, they knew their stuff. I don't think I saw them look at their note cards once. They just kind of went with it. Uh, the competition itself was another story. You see, at this state level, there's a lot of teams there. It says states, but it's more than just teams from New Hampshire because this first program originated in New Hampshire, so it's kind of like the capital of robotics, and a lot of teams from New England come down here to uh, compete. So there was a lot of competition and a lot of teams with a lot of time and money compared to the Bow Wildcats. So in the end, they didn't place at all, uh, and I expected some disappointment from that, but I didn't see any because I think they learned that their goal was to get to states, and they reached that goal. Their reward was going to states and seeing more robots and learning from other teams. And I think they went to states as almost kind of an opportunity to learn for next year, which is really, really great to see. So the big picture. Um, on the left here, you can see the Lego robot that the Bow Wildcats made. And on the right, that's the uh, $4,000 robot that my high school teams made. And the kids working on these robots are only three to four years apart in age, which is kind of insane looking at the size of each of them. You gotta wonder, how does a kid go from building a small, you know, basically brick with wheels to something this big? And the real answer is, there isn't much to it. It's not like you get to the high school level and they give you a textbook and say, read all this stuff, learn about robotics, and come back to me. It's gradual learning. Um, I'll put it from my perspective. Uh, when I came out of eighth grade, I obviously wanted more of this robotics, so I went ahead and took the PLTW courses with Stan over here and started doing robotics at high schools. And the knowledge I learned in both of those kind of built upon what I already knew. And the, the, the education I have now is kind of a gradual building from that. So it really isn't that hard to get to this level, and it's more of a uh, learn from your mistakes and eventually get to this level. 
So finally, here are the Bill Wildcats. Um, I was really, really proud of them and their season. They really kind of shaped themselves together, and I was really happy to meet all of them. I asked a couple of them later on what they thought about doing the engineering courses here at BHS, or even taking robotics at the high school level, and I was more than pleased to see how enthusiastic they all were about the opportunity to do that. So it was almost kind of like reliving what I did through my middle school and high school, and I'm excited to see where these kids will go. Uh, thank you very much.